Okay, here's here is my attempt at making a uh, a uh, octopus. Uh, the MFJ calls it the octopus. Uh, Chameleon calls it the uh, spider. And basically, this is a way to put together four uh, ham sticks. I'm sorry, eight ham sticks uh, for uh, pairs for four different bands, uh, all running on the same, uh, uh, you know, uh, out of the same box. And no, no switching required. So basically you have these four are the hot side. You can see the SO239 sticking through here. And they're, they're the hot side of, the, of what's going to be the coax coming up here. And then opposite them are four that are just screwed into the base. So they become the shield side of the coax. And you run these in pairs. So this, this set here, that's a pair. And this set here, that's a pair. And you get the idea. So there's four pair of them. And you buy, and when you put them back to back, the, uh, the sticks make a dipole. So that's basically how this thing works. This is a Hammond box. That's where I got the, uh, that's where I got, I got the, uh, I got this box from uh, DigiKey. Uh, it's an aluminum box. Of course, I had to drill the holes and stuff, but other than that, it's no problem. And you can see there's a cover that's going to go on here that has the, uh, the screws that go in it to hold it on. And there's also a lip on it. The cover has a lip on it. So if I want, I can squirt some sealant around here. And when I put it on, it'll be fairly waterproof. Then, uh... On the bottom, we have the uh, SO239 that's been bolted on there. And what this is, is there's going to be a 90-degree uh, mount that allows a couple of U-bolts to come in. Uh, uh, yeah, a couple of U-bolts to come in and hold it to the mast. And uh, I'm using fiberglass mast sections, you know, the Army uh, Milserp stuff. And I'm waiting for... Uh, I'm going to put them on the uh, draw bar in back of my van, but the, the inner diameter is too big for the three quarter inch uh, hole that goes in the bottom of the draw bar. And uh, so my brother-in-law is making me some spacers so I can put them on there and have them spaced up pretty nice. And that's basically what we're looking at. So it's, it's all done being wired up. You know, went, it went together pretty well. It costs a lot more than I thought it was going to, because most of this is stainless steel and, uh, that stainless steel is pricey stuff. And you'll notice that these guys, you know, they have a, a stainless steel washer on either side. Then there's a lock washer and then the, the, the three eighths by 24 coupler and then a, uh, a one inch or a one. Uh, I think I'm not sure if these are one inch or if they're uh, five eighths, but they're shorter so that you have room in the coupler for the, the stick to come in from the other side. And then the other ones are a little more complicated because they have the ring terminals. I, I use the ring terminals because I, I couldn't figure out any other way of making sure that these things stayed flat so that they'd go perpendicular to the wall. So I use the ring terminals and then a lock washer, a flat washer, and then I've got the, the shoulder nylon washer on this side and this side to keep the thing from touching the, the case. And I've already checked it with a voltmeter to make sure none of them are grounded out. So I've So you've got the bolt. The, uh, the, what do you call it? The uh, ring terminal, the lock washer, a uh, flat washer, a, uh, a washer with a ring in it, a rim in it to keep it centered. Another one on the outside, another uh, nylon washer on the outside, then another uh, washer, a lock washer, and then the, uh, and then the coupler. And my only concern is I'm hoping I'm not going to get too much capacitance because of these two big lock washers facing each other across this set of nylon, which might act as a dielectric. So I'm not sure. I'm hoping I don't get too much capacitance because of that. And then, you know, I, I just did these in a, in a daisy chain. I, I couldn't decide if it, that's the other thing I'm not sure of that I may have to change. I couldn't decide if it would be better to do this in a star pattern, you know, run a line out to each one or to daisy chain them. Uh, but daisy chaining was pretty easy with the, with the uh, ring terminal. So I said, I'll daisy chain them to start. And if it doesn't work, I'll, I'll tear it apart and do it again. So that's, that's my basic attempt at uh, making a, uh, a, uh, an octopus on your own. Uh, the bo the box is pretty cheap. The box is only about 20 bucks delivered and all the rest of it. If you, if you happen to have the couplers and stuff at home, uh, it wouldn't be too bad, but I still think I probably spent 50 or 60 bucks making this thing. 
So uh, that, that'll just give you a feel for how much one of these things costs. Obviously, you can't buy, you know, one of these couplers. you got to buy five in a package, and then I needed two packages of five. So there's a lot of leftovers. You know, bolts, there's a lot of leftovers. Washers, there's a lot of leftovers. So, uh, but I think if you just looked at what you, it actually costs to put this thing together, you're probably talking, yeah, maybe $75. Uh, uh, and because I already had the 239 and the, the bolts for that, the 230, this 239 and the bolts for that. And I al already had the piece of angled material. Uh, so I didn't have to pay for that. Uh, everything else I had to buy. So it was a, a real pain. But anyway, so that's basically how it looks. And uh, if I ever set it up, I'll put up another one and show you what it looks like. Bye.